Hello, I'm Jay Jackson. Welcome to WineNewsNoir.com. Thank you for watching and subscribing. We begin this episode with two follow-up stories, the first out of Wichita, Kansas, where the popular Jenny Dawn Cellars has closed its doors for good after opening in 2018. But there is hope for a new location and a call for help. What began as a symbol of hope and rebirth is ending mired in violence and controversy. Jenny Dawn Cellars, the jewel of Wichita's Union Station redevelopment, is now closed permanently, all because of a destructive break-in that proved too devastating to overcome. It's definitely a blow to the community. Brandon Johnson is the District 1 councilman where Jenny Dawn was located and staunch cheerleader for the winery. He says the closing will leave a gaping hole in the community as it was a destination for hundreds of residents. It's just been tough to see that she's not able to recover and so many of us are hopeful that she can find a way uh, someday to bring it back. But it, it's been a wonderful uh, business for our community. The break-in happened in early December. Police say Kobe Michael Clem used a patio umbrella to smash through the winery's glass front door. They say he destroyed nearly $30,000 of property, but critically, he ruined gallons of wine that was about to go on sale. Wines like their Watermelon Crush, which was the company's biggest seller, and the one thing that wasn't covered by Jenny Dawn's insurance. She had, I think, six or seven types of insurance, and there was, I think, one that was needed that I don't know if it was ever talked about that is the one that's not covering what she actually needs right now. It's trying to figure out, you know, for an entrepreneur, what all you need to purchase and trying to project into the future worst case scenarios and trying to budget for those worst case scenarios in the form of all the insurances you may need. But that's tough. You know, you don't know what's going to happen in the future. You don't know if, you know, the building's going to explode or something like that. You just have to, I guess, make your best guess. But in this case, uh, everything was covered, but the one thing she probably needed covered. And this is something I wouldn't have told you that would have happened. You know, somebody going in and just wrecking shop that doesn't happen all the time. So it's really tragic to see that happen to her. She's put so much hard work and her own money into it and done some wonderful things. And now because of that, you know, it's, it's tough to recover. WineNewsNoir.com reached out to the owner, Jennifer McDonald, for comment, but there was no response. She did post an announcement of the closing to Facebook, saying there is an effort to reopen in another location, something Johnson is hoping to see. I don't know the steps that she's taking, but I do know that there's a lot of folks in the community trying to come together and find a way to see if they can help her either financially or point her in the right direction. You know, my hope is that she stays in District 1. Um, but. Again, there's a lot of folks trying to rally around and see how they can support and help her out uh, in relocating and keeping that business going. McDonald has started a WeFunder campaign to raise money for a new location. You can find the link to the fundraising campaign on the April page of WineNewsNoir.com. As for Clem, he pled guilty to criminal damage to property, felony theft, and use or possession with intent to use drug paraphernalia. He will be sentenced on April 7th. And now the second follow-up, this time it's good news out of Sonoma County. Last November, we profiled Dennis McCarter after his amateur wine won a major award, prompting him to go pro. Well, now it's official. McCarter Cellars wine can now be purchased online and bought at a small but growing number of stores. His first ever commercial release is the Sauvignon Blanc, said to have notes of tropical fruit, lime, and minerality. A bottle sells for just under $40. To get his wine and join the wine club, go to mccartercellars.com. A ruthless pest, a prison stay for wine thieves, and music at the Chateau. Here are the stories for this month's Wine in a Minute. Humboldt County grape growers are being told to look out for a killer. State farming officials say the highly destructive Pierce disease has been found in the county for the first time. The disease destroys grape leaves and could cause millions of dollars in damage. State officials plan to hold meetings with farmers to discuss what steps they can take to protect their vineyards. A pair of international wine thieves are learning their fate. Priscilla Guevara and Constantine Dimitru will both spend at least four years in prison for the 2021 heist in Caceres, Spain. The lovebirds stole $1.7 million of rare wines from the cellar of El Atria restaurant, including a Chateau de Kim vertical dating back to 1806. They were caught months later trying to cross the Croatian border, but at this point, no word on the whereabouts of the rare wines. 
stars have aligned for the Chateau Saint Michel Winery Summer Concert Series. The picnic style shows will draw tens of thousands of fans. Some of the acts include Trombone Shorty, Diana Krall, and Ziggy Marley, just to name a few. The series runs from May 25th to September 22nd. You can find ticket information at ste-michelle.com. And finally, we end in North Carolina, where wine lovers are preparing for a springtime party in the vineyards. It's all about a good time and good business. It's the kind of wine party you hate to miss. The Sips of Spring Winery Tour, which kicks off April 22nd. Some 20 wine lovers on a day-long wine crawl of North Carolina's black-owned vineyards and wineries. All set up by the premium experience online community, Sipping Black Only. This is our second year doing these tours. Brandy Nellums of SipBlackOnly.com says wine lovers will taste, eat, and party at North Carolina's Seven Springs Farms and Vineyards in Norlina, Kim's Winery and Vineyard, also in Norlina, and Melanated Wines in Durham. Good times and networking is all but guaranteed throughout the event, but there's another equally important reason for the tour. The economic influx that it puts into these Black-owned vineyards and wineries. So we're going for support not from a charitable standpoint, from a commerce building standpoint, but also just to enjoy a great time. We are not in this alone. Preston Williams and his family founded the prestigious Seven Springs Farms and Vineyards, which is part of the tour. He says the event is an example of how black owned business owners can help each other grow. We have a platform and uh, we discovered an opportunity for us to share that platform with other uh, minority businesses. And uh, we, we're real excited because uh, we'll be uh, in a position where we can, can help others grow, get their product out. And, uh, hey, that, that's what it's all about. And Williams says the tours teach a very important business lesson. I firmly believe in the additive. You build it, they'll come. Uh, there are several things that we do. Uh, first class service, first class products, and first class building. And with, with all of that being said, uh, the customer's interest is always first, and that works for us. And I just think that any other minority business that offer that, our people will come and support. The tour starts at 9 in the morning and ends at 7. The cost is $280. Go to sitblackonly.com for details. And that's going to do it for this month's episode of WineNewsNoir.com. Please visit our sponsors on the website. Once again, thank you for watching and subscribing. I'm Jay Jackson. Cheers.